If you're investing in real estate, insuring your property is really important, both to protect the property itself as well as your other assets. And in this video, I'm gonna break down all the details of the insurance on one of my own rental properties, including how much and what type of coverage it provides, what it actually costs me, and who I worked with to buy the insurance. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Cleveland Investor Primer channel. My name is Rob and on this channel I share content on the topic of real estate investing, drawing from my own vast experience investing in the Cleveland market over many years. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below and tapping the bell icon so that you can get notified every time I publish a new video. And of course, likes are greatly appreciated and majorly help me out with the almighty YouTube algorithm. Some of the questions that arise over and over again amongst real estate investors are on the topic of insurance for their rental properties. Figuring out what type of policy is needed, how much coverage is suitable, what it should realistically cost, and who to reach out to in order to get the insurance are all topics that seem to be on the minds of investors embarking on their real estate portfolio building journey. I decided to make this video to address these questions and I'll use one of my own rental properties in a suburb of Cleveland as an illustrative example. Even if you're investing in a market other than Cleveland, most of what I'm covering will still be relevant to you. Though, as you can probably guess, the particular insurance broker that I work with in the Cleveland area probably won't be suitable for you if you're investing in Phoenix or Chicago or Atlanta or anywhere else. Before I get into the details of all this, I just wanna mention that I'm not an insurance professional or a lawyer or anything like that. I'm just an enthusiastic real estate investor who likes to help others, so nothing in this video should be construed as legal advice. And with that out of the way, the property that I'm using as my example is a three bedroom single family house built in 1924 and situated in the city of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. I've owned this house since 2017 and the insurance policy that I have on this property is a pretty typical policy for a landlord. This is known as a dwelling policy and provides coverage for the property itself in the event of a covered loss, such as a fire or tornado, coverage for loss of rents to replace income loss while a property sits vacant due to a covered loss, coverage for medical payments, and perhaps most importantly, coverage for premises liability, which is the coverage that'll protect the owner's assets in the unfortunate event of some sort of incident at the property that causes harm to someone. The amount of coverage I have to cover the actual house itself, as you can see here on the declarations page, section one, is $63,403, with $6,341 of coverage for the detached garage at the property, $3,000 of coverage for personal property, which means my own personal property at the site, such as appliances, but not the tenant's belongings, and then $12,000 for loss of rents coverage. It's worth mentioning too that if you have a mortgage on the property, the mortgage holder is almost always going to insist that your coverage amount is at least as much as your outstanding mortgage balance. All of the coverages here in section one are subject to a $2,500 deductible, which is the amount that I'd have to shell out before the insurance kicks in. Let's say for example that there was a fire in the kitchen that resulted in $8,000 of damage. In this case, I'd be on the hook to pay the first $2,500 and the insurance company would pay the remaining $5,500. Additionally, if the whole ordeal resulted in the house being uninhabitable for two months, I would be entitled to payment of lost rent in the amount of $2,000. The amount of coverage I have in section two, which could be thought of as the CYA portion of a landlord policy, includes $300,000 of premises liability for each accident, as well as medical payments coverage of $1,000 per person up to a max of $10,000 per accident. Basically, this is the coverage that pays for damages or injuries that affect someone else as a result of something that might happen at the property and serves as a buffer against getting sued and losing your shirt if someone were to trip and fall on a loose stair tread or whatever. If you're using a property manager to manage the ongoing operation of your rental property, they're almost always going to mandate that you have a suitable amount of premises liability coverage in force and often require that you have at least $300,000 of coverage. And just as a side note, on top of this liability coverage that's part of the landlord policy, many private landlords opt for an additional umbrella liability policy as well, which can provide a million dollars or more of excess liability coverage and can potentially cover high stakes claims resulting from an accident involving any one of your properties or vehicles. If you're someone with a reasonably high income or net worth, this is something probably worth exploring with your own insurance agent. Back to the actual dwelling policy declarations page on my Cleveland Heights example property, you can see that the annual premium I'm paying is $507, which is pretty much in the ballpark of all my other Cleveland area rental property insurance policies as well. The exact premium amount will of course vary from insurance company to insurance company and will also depend greatly on the property size, location, construction type, and age. 
If you've already got a landlord policy on a Cleveland area property, I'd love to hear how much you're paying in the comments down below. And last but not least, I'll share that the insurance broker that I work with to get this coverage is David Keller with Keller National in Cleveland Heights. This is not a paid promotion in any way, and I'll say quite honestly that David and his team are really great to work with. His office has written the policies on the majority of my Cleveland area rental properties, and I've even referred my own grandma to his agency for her own insurance needs. You can find the contact info for Keller National in the video description down below. So if you're on the hunt for a landlord policy in the Cleveland area, you should definitely give them a shout. And of course, if you found this video helpful, please click that like button down below, share the video with a friend, and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any of my future videos. Once again, my name is Rob, and this is Cleveland Investor Primer. Thanks so much for watching.